I am a little bit winded right now because we just paddled out into the middle of this ocean and it reminded me of when uh, I was single a couple different times. I was single, you know, when you're a teenager in high school and then I had a baby and then I was a single mom looking for a guy but I had baggage. Finally found a guy, I thought it was Prince Charming uh, but yeah, I married a Disney villain instead got divorced and I was single again. And I remember people would tell me things like, you're just, you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea. And just to be honest, I'm in the ocean right now and I'm looking down and it is whale season. Here we are in Maui, paddled out here looking for whales. And you'd think it'd be easy to find a whale because I mean, they're 70 to 90,000 pounds. They're like hundred feet long and I can't find a whale to save my life. Looking around and it's like, well, if there's so many fish in the sea, where, where's my fish? I want my fish. Now I just wanna let you know, I hooked myself a Whopper. I got a man named David Crank and he is the man for me. And we're actually celebrating 25 years of marriage this year. So anybody who's still looking for your whale, you're still looking for your fish, I wanna tell you don't give up hope. You're not gonna believe how being single and looking for your whale is gonna coordinate with being out here and us looking for whales. Here's one thing, I guarantee we're gonna find a whale today and you're gonna to get to see it. And I guarantee that there's somebody out there for you, not a somebody there's a perfect body. But the journey to find them might feel like you're out on the ocean alone. So I wanted to let you know you're not alone. You've got me and then I've got my friend Savannah Lindell. This beautiful, godly, gorgeous, uh, connected, awesome, smart woman is still single. But she knows she's looking for the right whale. I know you're looking for the right person. I know you're gonna find them. You're not on the journey alone. Are you ready? Well, snap, snap, snap. Let's go. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17 and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head. But only God could give me the life that I have today and you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Intense and particular. My Bible, chocolate chip cookies, the ooey gooey kind, and kettle cooked chips. I, I can't think of one. Maybe like a toothbrush in my stocking? I don't know. Oh man, I can do the sprinkler. some song about like the Lonely Broken Hearts Club or something like that. And I, I used to be an avid member of the club. I think I was president of the club. And I think we've all walked through that club. And I've been single and then married and <laughs> single again and then married again. And you know, being single is a thing. Being single well, even better thing. So I invited my friend on the show today, Christian girl. She's found a way to be single in the best way, even when sometimes her heart gets a little bit bruised. Uh, my friend Savannah Lindell. Hi, girls. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you how old she is, but she's a little bit above 29, all right? 29? A little bit. A little 95 bit. and some change? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if they know. 34, woo! 34. <laughs> and she's single, gentlemen. Send your resumes to me because I will be vetting them, okay? Just, I will be vetting them. And I just wanted to talk about yeah. your single journey as yeah, a Christian woman, absolutely. because like half the church is single. Yep. 50% almost, right? I think. That's what that's I crazy. heard. Yeah. So, you know, and everybody's born single. Yep. That's so true. <laughs> that's right. Everybody's single at one point in time. But you've really done being single well. Wow. Like you're not scandalous. You're not weird. You're not, you know what I mean? You, yeah. You've done it well. Hmm. So what's one of those things that you've learned 
through your journey wow. of being a single woman on your way to being a happily married wife, yeah. which is a whole nother show. <laughs> Amen. I received that, Nicole. I received that. Well, thank you. That is so kind of you to say because there's days where I feel like I don't do it well. Mm. You know, we're human. Yeah. So if you are single out there, um, you know, don't beat yourself up if mm -hmm. there's days where you're like, man, I wish I wasn't here, you know, like in this season. But I have learned so many lessons. God is just so faithful. And one I think right away is God doesn't waste our pain. You know, mm. he doesn't waste anything that we walk through. He always has a purpose for every single season. Mm -hmm. And so just embracing that season and saying, okay, God, in this moment, what are you teaching me? Mm -hmm. You know, in, today, what are you teaching me in this season? And knowing that God never wastes anything. Mm -hmm. You look throughout scripture and you can see that, that, that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So mm -hmm. I can rest if I have a moment where I'm like, why am I here? Why am I still single? You know, why am I going through another milestone, another birthday single? I just have to be like, okay, God, you ordained this season in my life yeah. and I'm gonna lean into it and receive everything that you want me to learn in this season. But in 34 years, you have not escaped heartbreak. Yeah. Even maybe somebody you thought could be like yeah. that person yeah. or your person. Absolutely. What did you do when yeah. that yeah. moment came? Yeah. You know, I, I remember two years ago, um, I was uh, dating this guy and he was awesome. He was like the full package, you know? He like checked all the boxes pretty yeah. much. Um, but then we ended up having this conversation and we realized we were going, he's a godly man, but we realized we were going two different directions. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like when it came to an end, I was like, God, he was everything. Like, yeah. why did you allow this once again for me to face another heartbreak? Like I was praying, I was seeking you. And so I honestly went through months of discouragement and I ran to my Bible. I mean, I, I typically read my Bible, but I felt like I got to submerge myself in the word of God yeah. because otherwise I might be derailed through mm -hmm. this. And I think, you know, for girls, whether you're even if you've walked with the Lord for a long time, don't think you can handle anything. Don't think you can just handle it on your own. Be yeah. like, oh, I know it. I know what God says. No, you need this as your anchor and as your compass. I dove into the story of Joseph, which I know that I have heard that story over and over again, yeah. but I felt like God said, no, you need to really know this mm -hmm. because you're not the only one who's faced disappointment. Savannah, mm -hmm. there's people all throughout scripture and there's a reason in your disappointment. And I love how in the end of Genesis, um, Genesis 50, Joseph mm. says, what the enemy meant for harm, God intended for good. Mm. And I was like, God, what the enemy, the enemy wants to use this yeah. to discourage me, to say, I give up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was close to being like, God, I'm, I give up. But God used it to actually strengthen me and confirm the call he had on my life. You have two choices. You can either allow, you know, your discouragement to pull you away from the Lord, or you can allow it to pull you closer mm -hmm. to the Lord. One of the chapters that I wrote in my book was on building walls. Yeah. And I went through hurt with my biological dad who gave me mm -hmm. up. I went through hurt with my ex-husband. Um, I was raped, I was molested. So I found myself um, each time I was hurt building a wall. Yeah. So by the time I got to David, I uh, I made it really hard on him. I didn't mean to, I, well, consciously, I didn't mean to do it. But what I've realized since then is subconsciously, I think I thought he was too good for me. Wow, yeah. He was single, I was single. We both kept showing up in the same place. He kept giving me his phone number for five wow. months. Persistent guy. <laughs> He waited, he didn't, he, I'm not saying he waited, I'm not saying he stood at home yeah. and like twiddled his thumbs, but he didn't give up on me. Yeah. And he didn't meet somebody else in that time. Wow. And I just wonder if I would have stayed stubborn and hard headed mm. and kept telling him no, yeah. like would I have just totally missed mm. him yeah. for my life? How do you approach guys? Yeah and situations and is, is everyone a possibility? Are you guarded or? You know, I would say I'm not, I'm more of an introvert by nature. And so um, I'll have people be like, Sandy, you need to learn to flirt, but I'm in ministry. And so <laughs> as a pastor, it's hard. <laughs> you know, you're like, I don't, I don't know, I wanna be wise. And I feel like the Lord, it's so, so simple for me, but just to pray. And so if there's someone I'm interested in, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm just gonna bring this before you. Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna be closed off. So I have dated, I used to think I'm gonna marry a pastor. He's gonna be in ministry. You know, <laughs> that's what my mom did. You know, that's what my grandmother did. That's gonna be me. And I just through conversations and just, 
godly wisdom parents. They give such godly wisdom. They said, you know, Savannah, so don't put God in a box. Mm. And so being open to it, but at the same time having standards and praying, because God will speak to you. He'll mm -hmm. show you so clearly. And I've just seen that time and time again. Mm -hmm. And not to get discouraged to be like, God, why no? Mm -hmm. But see, he's like protecting. Mm -hmm. He's protecting us. Mm -hmm. um, he's, you know, guarding us and, and saving us for that right person. Yeah. You know, God's no always comes for a reason. It comes because he's got a better yes. And all I can think of is those five months with David is how many girls probably flirted with him because he was cute and adorable and how God kept putting a no in his heart for these girls who were probably better than me, prettier than me, cuter than me, easier to manage than me. <laughs> but he kept giving David a no because he had him waiting for me. I know there's people in a lot of seasons of life right now, you might be single, you might be divorced and single again, you might be widowed, you might have a lot like me, I'm married, but I've got a lot of single friends and wondering who is that person? You know, we're gonna talk about this season of life, what God wants to do in you, with you, and for you. So did you survive COVID? Survive the last year? Survive your marriage? Survive not being able to find someone to marry? I know a lot of us are trying to just survive in life, and that's not what God called you to at all. No, God calls you to thrive. I know what it means to thrive through adversity. I was molested in fourth grade, raped when I was 13 years old. Life had failed me, but I failed myself when I was in high school and became a pregnant, unwed mother. Doesn't sound like the person who's supposed to have this TV show, but you know what? God doesn't call the worthy, He calls the willing. And He's called you not to survive, to thrive. It's why I wrote a real and organic book that is gonna blow your mind that I am so honest with you, but I did it intentionally to meet you in your pain and take you to the promise that God has for you that has never changed. I can't really put this down, Pastor Nicole. God is using it to um, dig out some areas of healing and faith that I did not know were there. Several chapters got to me, tug of war, glory days, bully bust for sure. Then I got to the wall chapter, and that one really stuck with me because I, I have some work to do. I ordered one book uh, to, to read, and I knew probably halfway into chapter one that I needed to order more. I needed this book to share. I want you to get it for free today at freethrivebook.com. Did you see that whale? Oh my gosh, I had no idea we would get to be able to see it like that. It came, we were there when it came up out of the water, it spouted, you saw the tail, oh! It's like, I'm just freaking out right now. I am freaking out right now, like when I was single looking at a bar at 1 a.m. and a really cute guy walked in. I probably wasn't supposed to share that part, but. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest, man. Like, I didn't, I didn't live a sainted life, and most of you probably haven't lived a sainted life. And if you have, I'm, I'm proud of you. I don't want you to feel bad for what you have done. Let's just start new today. I remember um, I had been dating a guy for a while, and I remember when I made a commitment, and I'm like, you know what? I am gonna make sure I do this right. And I let him know, hey, I am not gonna be the kind of girl who, you know, has sex before she get married and that relationship didn't work out go figure <laughs> but it's not always going to work out but do you know what that means that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't that was a great whale that was a beautiful whale but that was not my my whale so then I went on my first date with David Crank told you about Fridays we go out on our first date he kisses me at the end of the night and I just bop right out on him and I said hey look you know, I don't know what kind of girls you're going out with, but I don't pay for dinner with like anything physical. Matter of fact, I'm celibate. I'm not having sex until I get married. And so I'm sorry if I threw you the wrong vibe. And he's like, no, you're celibate. I'm celibate. This is going to be great. And I mean, I want to be honest with you. It wasn't exactly great. It was tough. <laughs> but when we got married, it was, it was special. And I remember my mom even giving me a hard time when she said when I wanted to buy a white wedding dress because it was on sale for $100 on the clearance rack and it fit me like a glove. It was my dream wedding dress for $100 and it was white. And my mom told me, how are you gonna wear a white wedding dress because your seven-year-old son is in your wedding? And I said, mom, it's not who I have been. I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and if he can cleanse me white as snow, don't you think he can handle my wedding dress? 
I'm telling you, don't think about every past or broken relationship. You know, even the whales, they can dive deep, but they even come up for air every 15 to 30 minutes. Let yourself come up for some air. Give yourself a break. Let your heart heal from your last breakup. That whale, he wasn't yours. Send him off to whoever, whoever whale he is. The whale that is yours is coming. Allow God to move the wrong people out. I hate to say that there's plenty of fish in the sea, but all the whales that we're seeing today, there's a whale for you. So after the breakup, I bet it was easy to be aggravated, angry, bitter. How did you keep from, I don't know, being surly, like growling at men? <laughs> yeah, well, I, he, the breakup actually ended really well. And so I think it was more of a bitterness that against God, like, mm. God, I have loved you. I have been faithful to you, Lord. I feel like the enemy wanted to plant lies in my mind that's saying, Selena, you deserve this. You deserve better than what God gave you. Made me think that my plans for my life were better than God's plan for me. You know, I've no. totally been there. Yeah, <laughs> it's easy to get there. Yeah, I've totally been there. Yeah. So how did you, how did you navigate that? Yeah, I think just, you know, burying myself in the word and looking at, you know, people's lives and mm -hmm. how God used the detours of life, you yeah. know, when it didn't go how they thought, but it always ended up better than they could have imagined. Yeah. And so just trusting like, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, which we all know, a lot of us know, we have it on coffee mugs, <laughs> You're right. we, you know, we have it in a little picture frame or whatever, but do I really believe that? Mm -hmm. Do I really believe that God has great plans for my life? Mm -hmm. And if I do, then I'm gonna surrender my will. And just coming to a place of surrender and, and it's not a one-time thing. It's a daily choice. And mm -hmm. so I felt like the Lord was like, okay, Savannah, give it up again. And in that season, the Lord brought me to um, a very simple picture. And you can find it on Instagram or whatever, but it's where the little girl, she's holding a teddy bear mm -hmm. and she's looking up at Jesus, a little teddy bear. She's looking up at Jesus and Jesus has his hand out and behind his back, he has a huge teddy bear. <laughs> and he's like, give me that small teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And she like tears are dripping down her eyes. And it's a silly analogy, but the Lord spoke that to me and mm -hmm. said, Savannah, do you believe that? Mm. Like you're gonna give something up. You're gonna have heartbreak again, but I'm using it. And I want you to surrender this area. Like for girls, I think it's the hardest area to surrender because mm -hmm. we all have a desire like to get married and there's pressure to do it. And, and society says by this time you should ha be married and have kids or whatever but to just surrender it and, and just trust, like God knows and he has the perfect plan. I remember getting divorced um, from my ex-husband and he was a crack addict and he physically abused me, he emotionally abused me. Uh, we got foreclosed on, he sold all the furniture wow. out of our house. So there is every mm. reason in the world to get divorced. Wow. Um, there was biblical grounds for the divorce. He'd let the unbelieving mm. depart, let him depart and he'd, he'd slept around and he did everything mm. that he could have done, he did. And it still took me a while to trade my teddy bear. Yeah. Because um, I remember saying to him over and over, and I, I wrote about it in my book, um, I had already been a pregnant unwed mother. So I'd never gotten married. So by the time I got married, I wanted to get married one time. I wanted mm -hmm. to do one thing right. And so I kept asking, we were engaged for 13 months, and I kept asking him, are you sure you want to marry me? Mm -hmm. All the girls in the world you pick, you want to marry me because I said, I kept telling him, I only want to do this once. And so um, the fact that our marriage was blissful for three whole weeks mm. was um, a, a really hard disappointment for me. Yeah. And I think that's why with how it went from zero to 100 yeah. so fast that most people would have just dropped it and ran. And I, I just couldn't. I thought, how have I failed? Mm -hmm. Why didn't this happen before we got married? You know, how did I deserve this? How can I fix this? If I can be better, if I can be sweeter, if I can be more supportive, if I can be more enduring. And instead of realizing that I should have never married him, that that's where I was mm -hmm. disobedient to God is I should have never walked down that aisle. Not that there's not a way that I can fix this because not all things are meant to be fixed. Yeah. I think he has us in these relationships on purpose. 
And then I think sometimes I had a tendency, you know, if you lose a puppy, you get a new puppy. Yeah. And if you lose a guy, just go get your, go get your new guy. And to, to kind of just take your mind off of it, what would you say to girls who are maybe going from one relationship to another, trying to get over the last relationship? Mm -hmm. I would say you need time to heal because um, you're not going to find the right guy if you're not in a healthy place. Mm -hmm. And you'll just relive that mm -hmm. same that same scenario, most likely again. Mm -hmm. And you have to allow the Lord to heal you. Mm -hmm. You have to allow Him to change you. You mm -hmm. have to allow Him to put His desires mm -hmm. in you because there's the right guy for you and God has a perfect person for you. But if you're so busy moving on to the next guy, you're gonna miss out. Yeah. And you're gonna com continue to um, make destructive decisions yeah. that are not the best for you. So push pause, mm -hmm. work on you, allow God to work on you, and then prepare you for the next season. So let's just ask one more question. Yeah. And while you're single, yeah. what is a way to like maximize your yeah. singleness? Now I have ideas in my head. Maximizing my singleness now that I've been married for 23 years would be like watching what I want to watch on TV. I would order the food that I want to order. I would go to bed when I want to go to bed. I would get up when I want to get up. I would shop when I want to shop. I would spend what I want to spend. To me, that would be maximizing yeah. my singleness. But in 23 years, 24 years, I might have forgot what it's like to be single. Submerge yourself um, in the things of God. Honor Him. Make building His house mm -hmm. your focus and watch Him build your life. And then it gets your mind off of yourself. Yeah. Because I think that's where we can get mopey and like self-pity is where we're just like twiddling our thumbs. Well, get up and do something. Yeah. You have something to offer in your singleness. And I'm here to tell you that good things are worth the wait. Take it from a girl who married the wrong guy. I wrote a whole chapter called Marrying Mr. Wrong. And I'm not joking when I tell you I missed God by marrying him. God loves you so much that he wants to save your heart from, you, he wants to let you hurt a little bit in a breakup instead of hurt a whole lot through a divorce or something even greater. I wanna pray for you right now. Someone is gonna come alongside of you. Someone was created to come alongside of you and not complete you, but compliment you and bring out the best. You know, I said I was gonna pray, but actually Savannah, would you pray? Single girl. Yes. To all the single people in the world. And guys, now you're praying. You're like, I think the Lord is sending her to me. <laughs> would you pray for everybody? I would love to. I just love that intro music to that show called Friends. I think it's because I always wanted friends like that. Somebody to encourage me, laugh with me, cry with me, be there for me. We get prayer requests all the time for better friends. That's one of the reasons I started the Circle of Friends. It's a mentoring partnership coaching group. You know, we don't get to be on TV for free. Now, like other shows get paid to be on, we have to pay to be on. And the only reason we're on is because of your generosity and your partnership, and I thank you for that. And a lot of ministries look like you partner with us and therefore we have the television program, but I want you to grow. So we've come up with this whole program. It's a partnership program. It's $27.77 a month. And every month I come to you with special teachings on Zoom, it's private, and you can talk live right back, ask questions and dig in. Every single month I bring you my guests. I bring you Amy Grishel, Victoria Osteen, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Elisa Bevere, Cheryl Brady, all of these people. And it's like these coffee conversations, the ones we would have that you wouldn't normally see, but we have them so you can see them and you can be a part of our circle and ask all the questions. Every quarter I send you a free book to help you grow. You get discounts because you're a friend with benefits. You get better seating. How can you become a partner with us in the circle of friends? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. I promise you, you're going to see immense value and you're really going to grow. Join us today. We went out on a kayak the other day and we paddled halfway to that island, like forcefully working for it. I was sore for two days. We worked so hard and never saw a whale that day. That was like me in my dating life. Um, I would see a guy, I think he's got a good job, he looks good, drives the right car, got the right body, whatever. And I'd try to make the relationship work and I'd end up hurt in a position I didn't want to be in. And I actually ended up worse than I was before. 
Well, let's talk about the whales for a second. So the whales, while they're here, they sing these songs. Listen to that. They sing these songs under the water. It's, they call it the whale song, and they say that the whale song stays the same the entire summer, and all the whales are singing the exact same song. The song changes a little bit throughout the season, but it doesn't change completely. There's somebody else out there singing your same song the same way. I don't know how God's gonna connect you, but don't rule them out because they're too tall, too short, uh, wrong kind of job, wrong kind of body, wrong color hair. Don't rule them out. Go somewhere safe, the house of God. Meet someone safe, someone who's fully invested in Jesus first and family second. And you're gonna end up with a life, a whale of a life that you could never imagine. Savannah, would you pray for everybody? I would love to. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every single, single girl and single guy watching, God. I thank you, Lord, that you have allowed them to watch this show today, God. Lord, that you're speaking to their heart, Lord, and you're reminding them that you, that you have a purpose for them, that you have a plan for them, no matter the decisions they've made, God, no matter where they find themselves in this very moment, God, Lord, your plans are to prosper them. Your plans are to give them a hope and a future. Yeah. So I pray that you would ignite a fresh faith, mm. Lord, a fresh joy. Mm. a fresh confidence, God, that you see them, that you're for them, Lord, and that you will fulfill your purpose for them. I just pray your blessing upon them, and I pray that you would use them in this season of singleness to bring you glory in Jesus' name. This has been the craziest thing, but we got to get back to land eventually, which is kind of the hard part of life, right? Because we got to go back to reality, and, and I know we're ending our time together, and you might be thinking, I don't want to go back to reality right now. But before I do, I just want to share with you real quick. If you're not following us on YouTube right now, you can get all the shows on YouTube. So subscribe to Crank Ministries. You can follow me on Instagram. And if this show is helping you, I just want to let you know, nobody's sponsoring us. We don't have all these people paying our bills. We have some partners, some people who watch the show and say, I love what you did for me and I love what you're doing for other people. You guys, the, the emails that I get from around the world, when people go to the website, nicolecrank.com forward slash let's talk, and they drop me their stories, their testimonies. Guys, you make me cry with your stories. I want to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share that. And thank you for helping me help people, give people courage. You guys have kept people from committing suicide. You guys have given people inspiration and hope. You guys have taken people from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. And if you want to help us do that, you can go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate. Or you can just text the number on the screen below and give. Or become a member of my circle of friends. That way you and I get on Zoom calls twice a month with a circle of friends. I send you a book every quarter and you partner. You help this show go for $27.77 a month. You help the show go. And it's so easy. Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. Okay, guys, until next time, we got to get going. I got to catch a plane out of Maui. I got to get back to the mainland. Get back to real work, not this fun work. Oh, I can't, not even doing it the right Hawaiian way. Hut, Huli, let's go. <laughs> See you next time. I hope I find one more whale.